Hey guys, John V here from Phone Arena. You're watching our video review of the Samsung Captivate Glide. It's available right now through AT&T for a two-year contract price of $150. Now, besides the obvious of being a Samsung Captivate with a landscape sliding keyboard, it's very modernized thanks to its dual-core processor and HSPA Plus connectivity. Now, the handset doesn't bear any resemblance to the Captivate from last year, nor does it look like a Galaxy S2 device. It's just a totally different design. Definitely likable either way. Um, it's not the most streamlined thing out there, but fairly compact when you consider that it's packing a landscape sliding QWERTY keyboard. Um, it does kind of feel rather flimsy in overall build. That's just because of the plastic exterior, but it does contribute in giving it a very lightweight feel in the hand. Again, we're greeted with a 4-inch WVGA Super AMOLED panel with the handset. It's not AMOLED Plus, just a Super AMOLED. Same thing as the Captivate from last year. WVGA resolution 480 by 800 pixels. Not the most, it's not the highest resolution out there, but again, for its screen size, it's more than sufficient for our needs. On top of that, it's able to impress us just because of its overly saturated colors, high contrast, and also wide viewing angles. Mainly because they're placed close to the bottom edge, we still have a tendency to accidentally press the capacitive Android buttons. Above the display, we find the handset's earpiece and also a front-facing 1.3 megapixel camera. On the left edge, we have a very prominent and tactile feeling volume rocker. While on the right edge, we find the easy to feel out and responsive dedicated power button. It doesn't require a whole lot of force to open up the handset to expose its keyboard. It's very springy, and once it's just opened up, you gain access to its 4 QWERTY keyboard. Our only issue is that its buttons are very flat, kind of flush, and almost indistinct to feel out with your fingers. But luckily, when you press them down, you get a good tactile response, and they're fairly large in size, good enough uh, to speed type properly. You also have the directional pad here on the right-hand side, and you have also some of the uh, Android buttons available to you right here on the left and right edges. Overall, definitely use. Interestingly enough, the handset is powered by a dual core 1GHz NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor coupled with 1GB of RAM and does offer a pretty responsive experience but with a live wallpaper activated, you definitely notice just a little bit of choppiness but no, it's not bad at all, still more than fluid enough, especially with the static wallpaper. With other operations, opening up applications, it's fairly swift with this operation and for the most part it is definitely enjoyable. We're again greeted with the TouchWiz user interface running on top of Android 2.3.5 Gingerbread and just like those other handsets before it, offers a lot of personalization with its various widgets, some being more useful than others. As far as the uh, app panel is concerned, it's your traditional grid-like form, but the neat thing about it is that you could organize it better uh, just because you could add folders and even different pages. By far, we prefer using the physical keyboard for typing up messages. It's a lot easier for our fingers just because of the portrait options available. It's a little bit cramped with its layout, but luckily it's very responsive to the touch. Of course, landscape options are going to be a little bit easier for our fingers. And as far as uh, its input methods, there are three available. You have the stock Android one, the Samsung, and also swipe keyboards. Web browsing is not a problem with the handset. It's able to load up complex web pages like ours very quickly with the HSPA Plus connections. On top of that, it exhibits a lot of fluid movements with kinetic scrolling, pinch gestures, and handles flash very well. Running the music player, it's basically the same interface that we've seen in other recent Samsung Android powered smartphones. But the thing that we like about it is that it offers quite a few different equalizer settings to better fine tune the, uh, the uh, song. And on top of that, you have a visualization option to give it a little bit different presentation. As far as the audio quality, it's definitely strong, powerful, and fortunately, it doesn't crackle or sound distorted at the loudest volume setting. Not surprisingly, the handset does a great job when it comes to playing back high definition videos. The one we have here is encoded in DivX 1920 by, by 1080 resolution, so 1080p. Thanks to its Super AMOLED display, it produces some deep colors, great details, and frame rate smooth to make the experience very enjoyable. Overall, we definitely like the photos produced by the handset's 8 megapixel autofocus camera. The results are quite similar to what we saw already with the Samsung Galaxy S2 devices out there. Uh, it takes great macro close-up shots outdoors. Uh, there's a good amount of detail. Color set a little bit on the saturated side, which is evident by the bluish tinge that you sometimes see. Indoors under poorly lit areas, though, there's a lot of graininess, which definitely softens the overall tone of the images. But the LED flash does a good job of illuminating the scenery, but again, further than 5 feet way it tends to cast a bluish tinge to the shots. Unfortunately, its 720p video capture is a little bit subpar to our taste. The biggest distraction that we have with it is the muddy tones of the overall video, uh, just because uh, details are rather faint and indistinct. It does shoot at a frame rate of 29 frames per second, so it's very smooth. We like that it has clear audio recording, but it also suffers from a lot of artifacting when you're panning very quickly. 
Color quality is clearly on the average side with the device, just because with the earpiece it produces some average volume tone, so it's not the strongest out there. And on top of that, voices have a subtle crackle hint to them. On the other end of the line, the callers didn't have any issues. They were greeted with robust and distinctive tones. When switched to using the speakerphone, it's definitely strong with its overall volume, but again, just a little bit scratchiness with voices. In our time testing out the handset, it maintains a solid connection to the network. The signal strength didn't fluctuate whatsoever. And on top of that, uh, we didn't experience any drop phone calls. If you happen to love talking a lot on the phone, you'll be happy to know that battery life with talk time is pretty great. Um, it's actually able to give us 9 hours of continuous talk time on a single charge, which is better than the manufacturer's rating of 8 hours. As far as everyday usage, it's pretty much average. Uh, you'll get by a solid day, a normal usage, but still something you're going to charge nightly. Now just because the Samsung Captivate Glide is following after other great devices for AT&T, such as the Galaxy S2 and also the 4G LTE enabled Skyrocket, you should still keep an eye out on this device, especially if you happen to prefer a device with a physical keyboard. You get the added functionality and usefulness of it for typing up messages, and still it packs a lot of you know high-end features inside of it, such as a dual-core processor, the lovely looking Super AMOLED display, and its performance is very balanced, so still you want to keep an eye out on this guy, especially for 150 the interior contract, it's definitely reasonable. So if you'd like to learn more about the Samsung Captivate Glide, you can check out our website, phonerena.com. This is John V. Thanks for watching, guys.